Go turn time. <laughs> Come here, babe. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. My name is Leanne, and I'm in the garden again. I've got my Jack with me today. We're going to give you a garden tour. It is August 14th, I think. My last garden tour was on the 4th. A lot has actually changed in the garden since then. A lot of things have been pulled out and a few things have been put in. I'm pretty stoked about it. All right, let's get to it. If you guys want to be kept in the loop with all my garden adventures, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified whenever I upload something new. Over here's the berry bushes again. The blackberries, some with the darker green leaves. And we've got some raspberries that are loaded. Go get some berries, Bubba. Raspberries. You love the raspberries, huh? You find one? <laughs> Get it! Mmm, I see a couple. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yum. Very good. See any more? Is there another one? Yeah. Go ahead. You can have it. What is that? What is what? Little bug. No. <laughs> I love you, sweet boy. I bet there's some over here. There's always lots on this one. Oh, there's none ripe yet. You must have picked it clean yesterday. These are what we've added. Ben built these a couple of weeks ago, and then I slapped this one together. These are extra panels from a fence so we have this privacy fence and one of the openings in the front is a double gate and when we got our shed when we got our shed we needed to make it wider so that the guy could deliver the shed so ben took some panels down and built a new gate and he wasn't able to use all of the wood from the old gate because he couldn't get it apart so we used it to build some raised beds so we have these three we have room for one more and then then and then i will be done adding raised beds to this garden. I need to get some cardboard, some sticks, and then I'm going to fill these with the compost from that free compost pile that I found. So if you guys are new to my channel, a couple of months ago, I found a free source of compost in my town. So I live near a military base, and if anybody is familiar with the area and that's watching, if you are a gardener, there is a dump on base and you can get uh, free compost. You just have to load it up into your truck yourself. It's just a pile, so it doesn't come in bags or anything. Um, it is so hot, too hot for long sleeves, but the shirt's cute, so I like it. Okay, free compost on base, main side. Check it out. Anyways, that's what I'm gonna fill these with is that compost, and then I have some compost that I am working on on our property it's just not going to be enough to fully fill these beds so I'll probably top them off with that i'll probably throw in some worm castings in there too and then call it good all right let's work on this garden tour also loving recording in 4k it just takes up a lot more space on my phone these are what's remaining of the martino's roma as you can see if you compare with the last garden tour video they are a lot smaller because i pruned them like a maniac I just learned from a gardener that I've become friends with at the farmer's market that you want to prune these very similarly to indeterminate tomatoes because of the mildew problems that they can have if they don't have good airflow, I assume. And I didn't do that. I let the suckers grow because I thought that's what you were supposed to do with determinants. Also, I've had a hard time trellising them this way because it's hard to like hold all the suckers up with one thing. I've got three or four Martino's Romas left. And then two celebrities. I just pulled two really big tomatoes off of the celebrity plant the other day. We'll see. They're putting on some new growth. I'm holding out hope that they'll give me some more tomatoes for the year. And ripen more tomatoes for me. As you can see, I pulled out a lot from over here. So just some flower seeds to take up the space for now. 
this tomato plant looks a little sick, but this is from my friend. This could either be a cherry or a um, Cherokee purple. Oh, leave the bee alone, okay? And if, in this spot, you see how we've got a bunch of brown grass? It's because this was a bonus pumpkin patch. But it just got infested with vine borers and it wasn't gonna recover. This is all the tomatoes that I pruned that I have need to put in the burn pile. It was infested with squash vine borers over here, so I got rid of them so that I wouldn't like help an infestation happen. And I don't want them to like move over to these pumpkins over here. All right. I really like having this many tomatoes, but next year, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a single row down the center of this of all tomatoes, I'm gonna do uh, indeterminate tomatoes. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick with indeterminate tomato varieties for next year because I I like taking care of those better. It seems easier for me to prune those. I know how to prune them correctly. I'm gonna do a single row and my hope is to put in three or four more in ground beds just like this one over here. So I'm gonna do two rows of tomatoes single row down these four foot wide, like 28 ish foot beds. And I'm going to grow herbs and flowers in front of the tomatoes so that it helps as ground cover, get more herbs out of it. And I just think it'll be a better use of the space and easier to take care of the space there. Also, I need to get taller T posts. These T posts are not cutting it. They're six foot tall, but you pound them into a ground a foot. So now they're only like, well, I pounded them into the ground like more than a foot. So they are four feet and something inches tall. Not tall enough for these tomatoes. They're all leaning over. Oh my goodness. This one is like completely stripped of its leaves. That, my friends, is a worm problem. There is a hornworm somewhere in this garden. A way to save some time when you're hunting for the hornworms is to start at the top of the plant because they like the new growth best, which makes sense. I don't see it. They're very hard to see. I know it's just going to pop out at me and be like, oh my gosh, there it is. Anyway, I sprayed them with BT the other day. So I wonder if that damage happened before that worm met its end. You see, it's like, I've got a fair bit of cherries left to harvest. This is the sun sugar. And those are Barry's crazy cherry. This is a Cinderella pumpkin. It's all the way over here now. So I just mulched over here to kind of try to get snakes to not come in here. Anyway, this, I've got, I think three or four pumpkin plants in here. And they're loaded with pumpkins. I, there's got to be like easily 10 pumpkins set. I see two from where I am right now. Um, but yeah, this has been doing really well. I also had the Cherokee tan pumpkin and I harvested one pumpkin from those. And then the squash vine borer took it. But it hasn't been seeming interested in the Cinderella pumpkins as much. Like I haven't had any squash vine borers in the Cinderella pumpkins. Which is pretty cool. Pretty good size. That's one of the larger ones. It's also mulching it like this makes it easier to mow around and I don't have to weed whack around everything now. This is the biggest one in here. My wood chip guy brought me another load of wood chips. This is hickory, it smells really good. And this pumpkin plants all the way over here too. Which I'd prefer it walk on the wood chips. This is my amaranth. This I think you're supposed to be able to eat this, but I didn't mess with it um, because I don't really know for sure if you're able to eat that if it's okay to eat. You can see I pulled my corn out. My corn was right here amongst these, but they did not do very well. I have not had luck with the corn. It's a 
amazing. Okay. I am loving growing zinnias. I literally cut all the flowers off of this yesterday and I have all of these are brand new blooms. It's amazing. All right, so I have got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 raised beds, three of which are not filled yet. These arches are way too tall. I need to lower them down. I have a plan. So if you guys watched, ay, 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 bees too close to me. I said in a previous video that I had an idea of putting in a greenhouse, a larger greenhouse, kind of like a mini tunnel in my garden with these bricks, making a big patio with these bricks and putting it over that changed my mind because if I did that, then I'm going to need to have some sort of containers to put gardening things in, like to put plants in. And I don't have those. I don't want to spend the money on that. So my second idea, I'm going to take down, once all this, all these plants are done growing on the trellises, I'm going to take the cattle panels down and a T-post. I'm going to pound the T-posts in on the edges of the bed. I'm going to make two tunnels with the eight two foot wide, eight foot long beds that I have, okay? I've got five cattle panels. So that's enough for two cattle panels per section and then an extra one. I'm thinking I'm going to move these T posts, get them out of the beds, pound them into the ground on the outside of the beds. I will take those T posts out. I'm gonna move the ones in that one to the far side outside of the bed. And then I'm going to stretch the cattle panels from the outside of that bed, the other side, like the further side of that bed over to here. I'll put the T posts there. The cattle panels might not reach all the way to the ground, but it'll make the arches a lot lower. So I'll be able to get to the top of them a lot easier. And my hope is to find some plastic that I can drape over the cattle panels and make a mini tunnel for me. Now what I haven't figured out is how I'm going to do the ends, how I'm gonna cover the ends up in a way to um, kind of seal it off. I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet, but so far that's my plan, is I'm going to make mini tunnels that stretch. Each tunnel is gonna have four beds in it. It's gonna be these four and these four are gonna be two separate tunnels. And I'm hoping, oh my gosh, I just found another loofah gourd. That's so exciting. Um, oh, two. Amazing, that is amazing. I was bummed because I've only saw one and now I see two more. Mucho bueno. Okay, distracted. I'm really excited about this because I think this will help grow even more, like expand, extend, I mean, extend my growing season even more. It'll be amazing. And I think it'd just be so fun. I met a master gardener at the farmer's market the other day and she was telling, or the, when I was talking to her, another guy was talking to us. He said that some of the plants that I've had trouble with, with the pests and stuff actually go pretty well in the winter. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to grow some things through the winter that you wouldn't think could grow through the winter. Anyways. Let's take you down the center aisle of the garden. I kind of sprinkled zinnias everywhere. And I was told that now I will have zinnias everywhere because they sell seed really well. And you know what? I am totally okay with that. I don't know what that bug is. Funky looking though. just harvested the beans the other day and there's so many more so these are actually like too big this one's probably fine but these are too puffy to eat they'll be way too stringy and the beans are the same with the cucumbers you want to harvest them in the morning they're same like with the cucumbers because the flavor's better so many My goodness. 
Look at the bounty. Hi. I had a bug like just fly right into my hair. No me gusta. Spiders like to make webs in between the trellises, and I walk through them a lot. I don't like that. It's really freaky and uncomfortable. I love harvesting fresh green beans. They're like my favorite. Okay. Over here. I had daisy gourds growing up here, and they just got hit real bad with pests, so I pulled them out. And I'm going to let the sweet potatoes just take over here. Sweet potatoes are taking up plenty of space. This is actually from... I had sweet potatoes in this bed last year, and I must have not harvested them fully. So this is from, like, a year ago. Those are my melon plants. Here's some more of that Mexican bean beetle damage. I've been seeing the Mexican bean beetle in the pupa stage. They look like little spiky yellow worms black with black spikes. Some basil. My jalapeno peppers. Putting on a lot of peppers. And they're getting a lot bigger than they were last year. It's pretty fun to watch. We got a weed growing up here amongst the marigolds. Trying to disguise itself. Here. Banana peppers. And some California wonder bells. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And then that's either a mini bell or a California wonder bell. You believe these marigolds, they started out in a plant that was like just that big. And now they're huge bushes. It's so cool. I've got some more peppers amongst these. Another marigold. Another banana pepper plant. Oh my, look at that. That is worm poop. Where's the worm though? Interesting. Mucho grosso. Here's the loofah vine in all its glory. The loofah seems to be pretty pest resistant. It has been getting some damage, but really, I mean, maybe it just grows so aggressively that it doesn't matter. So I have this one really large gourd, and then I spotted two more today that are smaller. I'm not gonna get that close because it has a wasp on it. But there's a little one right there, and another little one right there. Pretty cool. All right. I'm gonna show you my back zucchini patch, but it's no longer that because the squash vine borers have totally killed it. And it's unfortunate, but whatever. I put a little mulch out there around it, planted some pumpkin seeds and they haven't sprouted yet. So we'll see how it goes. Squash vine borers totally, they're the worst, the worst. I've heard that it's really hard to grow zucchini out here from a master gardener, so I'm not really that upset about it because if she if she even admits that it's hard, then it's not just me. So I will learn though. I will get zucchini eventually. I bought a plant to see maybe if it's already mature enough, I could get it to grow and give me some zucchini. Okay, I'm going to show you guys the flowers and then we'll close this video out. Thank you so much for watching this tour. It's been so fun to watch, to show the garden to everybody. Anyway, here we go. There's Miss Opal Jan prowling around like a wild cat. Okay, so this bed has changed so much throughout the season. I had so much in here and a lot of it died. A lot of the dogs trampled on it. I even had like a rosemary in the center and it didn't make it. So here we have some oregano. 
and zinnias, and that's all that is surviving in here. Here, this is a sweet potato. I had this inside in the winter. This is basil. It's going to see. This is an azalea bush that is dying. This is a lemon tree. And this is rosemary that I started from seed. Okay. Over here, I sowed some extra flower seeds. So this one is a Cosmo. This is a Zinnia. And then these larger ones are Zinnias. This is parsley that's still holding on and yarrow that's going to seed. And that's a weed. Here, my baby's crying inside. All right, here, more yarrow that's going to seed and some that's flowering and looks beautiful. I think that's a zinnia, that little one. My roses, giving me some more blooms. So pretty. Some mint and a super short sunflower. Look at that. <laughs> That's cute. More mint. I might regret putting mint in here. Yara that has gone to seed. Tiny little sunflower. How pretty is that? I think that little cluster of green right there is something that I planted intentionally. But I'm not 100% sure. These were the asters. They are dead. I'm really liking the smaller sunflowers too because they fit into arrangements a lot easier. I was sold a couple arrangements at the farmer's market this past week. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. All right, lastly, we have a zinnia over here. How pretty. So many flowers. I cut all these off last or yesterday too, and then now they're all new blooms. This one I think I left actually. But that's a brand new opened bloom. So is that one. It's only like 7.30 or, it's only like 7.30 or 8 o'clock. But it's so hot and humid and I'm dying. So I'm going to go inside. <laughs> also, if you need a friend to learn how to garden with, I'm your girl. Happy gardening.